Hello and welcome to another video of the IT Career Guide YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the CompTIA A plus exam and I want to give you some tips and tricks to hopefully walk with confidence into the exam and pass it with the appropriate score. So let's get started. So first of all, I want to talk about the exam info itself. The A plus certification is made of two exams. It's the 220-1001 and 220-1002. So these two exams were released in 2019 and should be valid for a total of three years. I'm recording this video at the end of 2020, so you probably have another year to go before the exam changes again. So each of the two exams is made of 90 questions or up to 90 questions, and you have 90 minutes per exam to be able to go through the entire questions. So it's about a minute per question. Some questions take a little more time, some a little less. But overall, it should be just doable, so don't freak out about the time. For the first exam, the 1001, you need to score 675 points out of 900. For the 1002, you need to pass uh, with 700 points out of 900. As mentioned, the A-plus certification is made of two exams that you need to pass. Each of the two exams currently cost $226. So you're looking at a total of $552 for the a certification. And um, so I know this is a small investment into your future, but you should be able to uh, get that money back very quickly, especially once you get into IT and you move between positions, um, your pay raise is almost guaranteed. So next I wanna talk about what to focus on when you're studying for the a certification exams. So I'm not looking at the overall study guide or the topics, but what do you want to focus on when you walk into the exams? I mean, you go and learn and study everything, but then when you start cramming, um, that's really where you want to focus on certain topics. And uh, what I want to mention up first is really, don't really bother filling your head with information about RAM, pin counts, processors, socket specs, um, operating system requirements, uh, specific windows, upgrade paths, or any of that, uh, that, that plain stuff that is just really memorization. If you look at it from a conceptual perspective, what really happens during your day-to-day -day work? And that's really where you need to concentrate on with what you're studying for with the a certification. So of course they could ask you about how many pins does a certain socket have, um, but where's the value in that? There's no real life um, really scenario where you sit there and hmm, is it whatever? No, it's not. So don't worry about those. Really think about more what applies to your real life position if you work in an A plus certified capacity. So a help desk position, troubleshooting and, and really helping your end users, your customers. So that's really where you wanna go in a little deeper, have a good understanding for everything else, just understand the concepts know what a processor is, uh, know what a bus speed is. I mean, the bus speed is kind of important. You might get asked a question when you take two individual computers apart and you wanna build one with all the parts from the two that you find the matching bus speed. Um, specifically, when it comes like to RAM, um, you wanna make sure that you don't mix and match RAM sticks uh, that have different speed. So what topics are really important when you study for the A-plus certifications? So you really want to learn about the troubleshooting, security, safety, run commands on the uh, command line window for Windows, as well as for um, Linux a little bit. Understand the control panel. So Windows 7 might still be uh, mentioned in the certifications. Um, it should be Windows 10, but the control panel itself, if you bring them up, they're pretty much identical. So don't worry about it too much. But command line for both Windows and Linux is very important. So you wanna have the basic command line tools, the basic command line commands available so that you can do troubleshooting. And in one of the next slides, I will talk about one of those scenarios where this comes into play. Then um, sometimes depending on what study guide you read and what exam um, preparation you read, the word cloud computing will come up. Be aware, um, in most cases, cloud computing is supposed to come up in the 1002 exam, so the second exam. But be aware, there are questions about cloud computing that can come up in the first exam, the 1001. So make sure you have a full understanding of cloud computing. Um, make yourself um, familiar with the topic. Actually, if you look at it, it's 2020. As I'm recording this video, cloud computing is big. It's not just kind of big, it is big. 
So spend an appropriate amount of time learning cloud computing. It will help you in the long run. The next thing that is super critical to understand are really the wireless standards. So um, not just know what protocol and uh, what the benefits are, really go down deep into the wireless standards and understand those. It's very important. Uh, this is one of the areas where you really can lose a lot of points when you go into the exams. And then kind of related to network ports. Uh, which protocol uses what port? So, and that's really another critical piece because when you start troubleshooting a situation, you want to know um, what port 25 is for or port 110 um, or at, at what port is a web server by default responding to a request, which port um, leads to an SSL secure connection when you talk to a web server. And of course, there are several more ports that you want to memorize. So just um, spend your appropriate amount of time. This is just plain memorizing, um, but it will go a long ways. So then the next study tip really here, a lot of you are using Professor Messer's videos and he's one of the best really explaining um, all the topics related to A plus and of course a lot more, but um, I know you are using the videos and it's really a great resource. But do yourself a favor. Did you know that the human brain takes much more time it needs uh, a little more time to read content compared to listening content. The same thing is when you record content, audio recording, speech recording, it takes a little more time to focus and to concentrate. But listening, um, it is actually beneficial that you can speed up the replay of videos and podcasts. And well, guess what? Professor Messer is not necessarily known for being a fast talker. So, and there's a reason why he does it. So it's really a slow, steady process so that everyone can understand it. But if you are fast and you can pick it up fast, you know, you can increase the speed of the videos and set the replay speed to a much higher pace. Well, guess what? That saves you a lot of time. You can watch a lot more videos um, in a much shorter amount of time. So um, use that. The same thing for podcasts. If you listen to IT related podcasts, get a podcast player that allows you to change the replay speed you save a lot of time. It's also um, still the same way that you can memorize it, um, no matter if you play it at the original speed or just 10, maybe 20, 25, 30% faster. So take advantage of that. So then, really important, when you go to a testing center, and I know it's December 2020, we're still in the pandemic, uh, things around us are really bad, a lot of these exams are being held remotely. But if you go to a testing center to take any type of exam, spend some research, find out what is that testing center like. You do not want to be in a small testing center with bad air circulation, sweating and, and feeling stinky and, and, and sweat running down um, your face. You want to be in a testing center that is bright, that has lots of light, where it's quiet, where you have good air circulation, where you're not heating up and, and becoming nervous. So make sure that your outside environment when you take an exam is really to your liking, something where you feel comfortable, where it's not like you're walking in and it's just like, oh, this, this feels like a, a bunker of some sort. So now spend some time. You can even go there and visit and just take a quick look. Usually the t these test centers in normal times um, are staffed um, during the normal business hours. You can walk in and just ask, can I take a quick peek um, at the testing center? So spend the time, maybe ask friends or listen around in the industry what test centers are good and which ones have a really bad reputation. Then in regards to um, studying, um, go and do yourself a favor and do a Reddit search or a Google search for A plus simulations. You will find a whole bunch of content. But what you're looking for is really where people post information about the simulations that are happening during the A plus exam. So um, there are situations where people run into those simulations and they're just like stunned. They have no idea what to look for. So here's an example. One, one individual reported back that uh, he had a simulation on his exam where he needed to navigate the command prompt and fix a bootloader with the boot rack forward slash fix boot command line command. So um, it was helpful that he could go. So that individual was not able to go to the command line and type in boot rack forward slash question mark. All he was able to do was type in help and receive a basic list of commands. 
that included boot rack, it triggered his memory and he was able to answer the question. But uh, it was really difficult by not having the individual command and then using the question mark uh, to get the additional help. So these are the little nuggets that you can find when you go onto the internet and you search for A plus simulations, A plus exam simulations. Spend a little time there, just go through what people are reporting back, what are the simulations that they had, and then uh, really gain that confidence when you research it and understand, even if you don't know the command, but knowing to use help, find the list of commands and then hopefully seeing that trigger that uh, jogs your memory and you are able to respond uh, that uh, or answer that question with the correct number and the correct answer. So the other thing when studying for the exam, take notes. So everyone has a different learning style, but taking notes is one of those critical pieces where you really want to take advantage of it and you want to do it over and over and over again. Make flashcards, read them at any opportunity that you have. Um, you're sitting at dinner and you're just um, studying a little bit, take your flashcards out, study a little bit. The repetition is key, really. Just memorize the highlights and over time with repetition, um, you will gain that knowledge and you walk into that exam with confidence and you are able to pass it. Troubleshooting. I mentioned this earlier. Troubleshooting is really the real life of an IT technician, a help desk person. So study the troubleshooting. That's really the, um, the bread and butter that you need to understand. How do you troubleshoot? How do you go from certain situations to another and really take that knowledge, um, pick that knowledge from the right question and identify it and then you are able to answer those questions. And as I mentioned the questions, read those questions carefully. There's often a little misleading information in there or it's so obvious, oh, this is this, well, there's a little nugget of information that is sitting on the sidelines a little bit that is so critical to answer that question correctly. So take the time, read the questions, and make sure you write all the details down on that note sheet that you eventually have available. Or really identify, okay, what are the key components of that question? So I think these are my study tips for the exam, for the A-plus certification. Remember, there are two exams. Um, ideally, you want to take them both in a very short time frame. So study for both, um, take the first one, give yourself a two-week break, and then go into the next one. And um, yeah, you should be um, able to really pass them both. And then hopefully you are A-plus certified and you can report back here. And um, I'm really looking forward um, to hearing about your experience from the exam. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you have not subscribed, please do so. I upload videos every Monday. And uh, so I'm looking forward to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.